It's fitting that my testimony starts with the day I'm up here getting to be with these beautiful folks, talented. I'm just trying to keep up, I promise you. Um, when I was seven years old, um, I was put on stage with a bass guitar in my hand. Not in a church, in a bar. Um, it would be like a song a night, whatever. Went to two songs, I signed autographs as a seven, eight, nine, ten 10 year old, right? Giant. 10 years old, I, uh, instead of a song or two a night, it became a full-time member. They put a six string guitar in my hand. A lot more power with the six string, right? Amen, brother. Amen, brother. Uh, 15 years old. I'm just still thinking about you. Yeah. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> so 15 years old, I decided it's time to be a teenager. But what I had saw as a 7, 10, and 15-year-old, no kid should ever see. That lifestyle that you see, the... Uh, people I had in my life at that time, they were, um, let's just say, <clears throat> married Monday through Friday and tipped their toe on Friday night and Saturday night, okay? And as a 15-year-old, that's a uh, man you look up to. That's not what you're supposed to see. As a 15-year-old, I was a full-fledged addict to that lifestyle. I'd done it all. I grew up with a Eight ounce Kurz Light, Kurz Original, many times in my hand, seven, eight, ten years old, Thompson Park. Um, it's normal. Fifteen, there wasn't much I hadn't done. Twenty years old, uh, I was headed down to Lubbock to watch my sister play basketball. And uh, after her game, God put a lot of grace in my life. She's sitting over here. I can't look at her because I'll start crying. But I love her. Um, she had on an orange cap rock basketball uniform and green shoes. <laughs> and I'm like, if she's brave enough to wear that, because I'm a dude that if you all go right, I'm going left. A lot of correction in that kind of action. A lot of correction can come from it, but... Plus, she is a bully. She's on the basketball court. She scratched, claw, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> and we had a lot in common, right? So, man, I, just to let you know, I am man. I'm still figuring things out. Um, I waited to ask her out on February 15th, not the 14th, right? Too, too much thought goes into that date. Fast forward to December 5th, 1992, we get married. Today's December 5th, right? Wow. 29 years Happy today. And now I can look at you. I love you. I love you. So, but little did she know after we got married, my altar didn't have God, Jesus, church, family. It had one word, R-A-C-I-N-G, racing. And I was an addict. I got friends in here that I shared a pit with and track, and uh, I'd spend whatever it took for a tenth of a second because my pride was going through either my uncle's car or my youngest, my oldest son's car, right? Um, from that time, up until 2009, I, um, I had that racing. It would be a Friday night, I would leave. Missouri, Kansas, wherever, Oklahoma. Show up Sunday just in time to go to work. And she put up with it. Um, that was a long time, 92 to 09. During that time, uh, my son had a pretty good wreck in Oklahoma. It uh, kind of changes your thoughts when you see him flipping in, don't in seven, eight, ten times, and he's 15. Uh, as well, during that time, he was about 6'1", 205, and about seven, eight months later, he was 6'3", 
2-7. He was on a football team out here that went to state. I see one of his brothers back there. Didn't lose a game until they got to that last game. And uh, when, you, when you're around great players like he was, people started noticing him. And so quickly, <clears throat> racing got thrown off of that altar for the altar of youth sports. That altar was, uh, it's really worse than the racing because it involves your kids and my pride over things I didn't accomplish. I'm just being truthful, man. Um, so we go from, that's 2009, go to 2012, May, June. I've got three boys now. Brennan's 19, Colin Brady are 11 and 9. And I don't know if it was faculty from here. I don't know if it was staff over here at the middle school and the elementary. If it was teachers, probably a culmination of all of the above, right? But somebody stirred Colin Brady. I coached starting in 1990 all the way to 2018. God knew how I love to show young men how to do things they shouldn't have done as a fourth, fifth, first grader, to be senior. But this time he was using my kids. So that summer, um, I'd thrown a lot of water on my two youngest boys' fire. August 2012. If you know my middle son, you know he's just like me, a whole lot of heart. Don't mind getting dirty. Um, after me throwing some water on him, you know, church, you know, God, I got, my vision of God was Uncle Sam, the way I was raised. He was, I want you with a scowl. Our father ain't that way. He doesn't have a scowl. Tommy Spencer taught me his kindness knows no bounds, right? Cole, being a really a lot like me, <clears throat> 11 years old, I pick him up, Home Depot, Sansi and I-40. Off the bus, he comes in, we're talking about his day. After me quenching him, like I said a few times, I was, he says, Dad, I checked a book out at the library today. Two words on that book. Holy Bible. It's really the first time God took my heart and hugged it. But again, I threw some water on it. Two days later, Brady, if you know Brady, he's the comedian in the family. He can say, I can be mad as a snake. He could say something. Just make me bust out laughing. Brady sets up in bed. I'm tucking him in. He says, Dad, when are we going to church? I'm like, you know, bah, 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 bah. throw some water on him. He says, Dad, I'm serious. Why don't we go to, let's go to Bushland. We'll know everybody there. So that was in August. Between August and October, they had talked to their mother, I know. She had tried to intercede a couple of times. Second time, I got aggravated. I'm like, I'm, I'm done. Quit mentioning it. I'm not going. And on October 21st, 2012, after about three months of really in the back of my mind, that God's just stirring. He's pushing. This was my rubber meet the road with him, I feel like. He's like, it's in or out. I walk into the living room on a Sunday morning after I slept in, 9, 10, 11 o'clock, whatever it was, and there on the couch sits Vonda, Cole, and Brady watching church on TV. As I said in the first service, I went to get a drink. I went back to the bedroom and I had my Melissa in the bathroom moment. 
you don't know that story, pretty much laying in a pool of tears, prone on the floor. I said, God, I give. I quit. You win. I'm not running. Because I couldn't. I couldn't bear it no more. B-A-R-E. Um, October 28th, 2012. I walked through them doors right there. Make it about 20 foot inside the room. I got to say it again. Sorry, brother. This, this dude hits me up about 20 foot right there, about the fifth row, dressed in clothes designed by Natalie. <laughs> and I recognize, you said you're Brennan's dad. I'm like, yeah. Um, I am. I recognized him. He'd been a part of the team. So we talked, you know, my claws are out, man. I'm ready to roll. This pastor approaching me, he's 20 foot in this room. What's he think he's doing? <laughs> but he says something after about a minute or two of verbal exchange. He looks me dead in the eyes. He says, I'm glad you're here. Okay, I go sit down. I got my black leather jacket on, man. I'm hard, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Amen. Amen, brother. And so, <laughs> lights go down. Music comes up. Granted, I'm looking for any excuse, right? And then all of a sudden, this is what I've seen. The music started and John Bon Jovi started singing. I'm like, who is this fruitcake with the mic in his hand? I didn't come to hear no concert. I love you, man. You got to know for, for what I'm saying, that seven-year-old kid, that 15-year-old kid, to be able to be up here with this talented, lovely group of people playing for him, that's redemption. That's healing. Okay, that's healing. So I get through judging Paxton Bon Jovi. And uh, then as I, the angel that's behind this piano back here, the, as I called her, the Borger Beauty Queen. Amen, bro. Amen, Amen. yeah. She, she started singing just like she's playing. And it took me back to that kid that had two grandmothers that played piano, and I sat in the floor for hours and listened. <clears throat> then the GQ pastor gets up here and starts talking. Five minutes into his sermon, I'm looking around for the fluorescent arrow blinking above my head, pointing right at me. I'm like, yeah, thankful. Thanks. For, I'm glad you're here. My, you know what, right? <laughs> you knew I was coming, Pastor. His sermon that day was the importance of being a dad. And so I'm there in my black leather jacket, big tears. I'm just fighting, right? Next. The next Sunday was November 4th, 2012. And Lurch, as we call him, my oldest son, he joined us. So that day, November 4th, 2012, was the first day that my core five ever set foot in a church together. Wow. That's redemption. Wow. That's it. It's just... The 2nd of December, four of the five were baptized. All of us, except my youngest son, and he waited a couple of years till he was ready. And I gave him all the credit in the world for doing it on his accord, right? December 8th. I forgot. Did I? I did, I did. December 8th, we go for our 20th anniversary. Me and my sweetie there. Sanibel Island, Florida, right on the beach in the cabin. It's the last full day we were there. I'm out on the porch, send Jeff a text, a picture of a sunrise, because Melissa likes sunrises. The word and a cup of coffee, the door's open. And in there on that bed, I see her. She's asleep. And man, that's where I want you to listen. 
first time in my life I heard the word Trinity. Prior to this, Trinity was slot car parts. I used to race slot cars, right? Back to the racing, right? He said, Brent, when you submit to me and then allow me to lead, that frees her up to be that. No longer will she have to take your place. When you accept your role, she don't have to fill in the void. And what she did at that moment, she came right here. And after 20 years of marriage, we were 100% reinvented couple. I looked at her in a way I never, oh my Lord, I just like, I know why the word woman came because I looked at her after that. I'm like, woo, man. <laughs> so. But that Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and he said my name. Man, I encourage you. Speak it. Live in it. Accept Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and say your name. God was assigning authority in the garden. Nobody took it. I've had a vision since because my brother Von Traeger, we, we, in our life group, we talked about this a few weeks back. <clears throat> what I saw was a crack opening as they left. Canyon Valley, whatever you want to call it. And then this big cross fell just like a bridge. I come in them doors every day, broke, in need of fellowship. I'm an extrovert, so I hug. I gotta, I gotta be around people, man. When you come in this room, pastor gives an invitation. This has been laying on me since the last service. Thank you for the freedom, brother. When he opens this altar, you've got to know that it is not judgment. It's safety. If you're here with your heart, first thing we're doing is praying for them individuals who are stepping out in faith. And if you're not, shame on you. You need to get here. It's true. So, it's upside down. It helps if I turn it right sideways. I mentioned youth sports all ago, right? And that altar that I'd created. Know this, that was post-salvation for Brent. When you're when your oldest son gets colleges interested in him and he's got teammates that are going, I was all in. Pick a college in this Midwest, he was there, right? I got stories about that too, if you want to hear it, but this ain't the time. My middle son and my youngest son, they played baseball. Youngest one decided as a sophomore it wasn't his gig no more, and I gave him all the credit in the world because he, he's kind of like me. He's got his own train he conducts. My middle one, he was born with a right arm. At 15 years old, he was plus 85 off the mound and around 95 with the bat. You know about baseball? You can have a kid that's batting 600 with 60,000 RBIs and some skinny kid show up. If he can throw that ball and he can swing that bat, that coach thinks he can save him. He can coach him up. Well, he's a lot like me. Things didn't work out. Next thing I want to tell you, parents, a mistake at 18, 16, 19 has no weight like a mistake at 28, 29. And it took me a long time, and that Mr. Tommy Spencer speaking life over me says, you know what, Brent, sometimes you got to realize you got to give him to the Lord and pray I prayed so my oldest son goes off to college spends a year 
he left 6'3", 270, come home 6'3", 300, and I did not recognize him. That 30 pounds made, we called him Lurch. He'd come, he'd come home the Hulk. And Vonda and I were struggling because he, he, he wanted to stop playing. <clears throat> A friend of mine, David, called me, who is Brennan's, his son's Brennan's best friend. He said, he said, chap, I think you want to hear this. He said, I'm, me and Brennan reached out last night. We met, we talked. He said he loved the sport too much to not play it with his heart. At that time, God said, maybe he was playing it for you. I just don't want to disappoint you. But he said this too, and I thought it was a very mature thought. He said, Brandy said he wanted to be able to walk at 30 years old, and it just ain't worth it. At that time, God again grabbed my heart and hugged it. God knows you better than you know yourself, right? Because he starts here when he speaks, then it goes to here. And he's shown me that. My middle son, I told you he was blessed with an arm, etc. We'd been in the World Series, Youth World Series. We'd been all over. I mean, it's, it's irrelevant. You get the point. <clears throat> he graduated in 2019. That summer, something, you know, we're, we're going through the summer. It's him and Brady think he, they can take me and mom on a basketball court. So we had to go show them that we could still do it. But at the end of that, we go to Toot and told him to get a fountain drink. And this kid that had been through a bunch, made some choices, had all these schools interested in him, looked at me while I was at the fountain getting a drink. And he said, Dad, thanks for taking me to play basketball. And folks, I tell you at that time, there's another hug, I'm going to tell you. So if that resonates with somebody, I just want to tell you it's the little things that matter. I was the one, many times, not the 99. You never forgot me, ever. I saw things as a 10-year-old not fitting. When you're, when you're a kid and you, you don't, I didn't realize till 40 years old the damage. God took them cracks, them scars, and phew, wiped them away. So, just again, just don't forget the little things. The, the fishing, the take time out in the building cleaning together. It, it doesn't matter. Serve your king, lead your family, and watch what happens. Because I, I ain't got it figured out. You see me, see him 